Today's lesson is going to deal with the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And before we begin, we do want to review the three parts of the cell theory. Cell theory has three parts. One, all living things are made up of cells. Two, the cell is the basic unit of life. And three, all cells come from other cells. So as we begin today, we want to find out what do all cells have in common. Well, number one is they're going to have DNA. And remember, DNA is the instructions for life. And it's in exactly the instructions for making proteins. Proteins are vital, especially the enzyme version of proteins. The second thing that all cells are going to have is a cell membrane. The cell membrane regulates what comes in and what comes out of the cell. So we're going to write down regulate what comes in and out of the cell. The third thing is going to be ribosomes. Ribosomes are tiny structures, you remember those from chapter 12, and what they do is they make the proteins. Every cell's got to have proteins. They got to have their enzymes to control their chemistry. And then the fourth thing is going to be the cytoplasm. Sometimes you just see it referred to as cytosol, and that's essentially the jelly or syrup inside a cell. And that's what all the organelles are going to be floating in. All right? Cells come in two flavors. The first type is called a prokaryotic cell. In a prokaryotic cell, number one, or actually there's two features of it, the first one being the most important. Prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. And they also do not have any membrane-bound organelles. And membrane-bound means that there's a membrane that goes around the organelle. Think of like your mitochondria, your nucleus, um, your ERs. All of those have a membrane that deals with them. Okay? So what you want to remember, and this is a really simple way to remember it is, pro means no. And what we mean by no is no nucleus and no organelles, no membrane-bound organelles. So let me get caught up here. So no membrane-bound organelles. Now anything that is prokaryotic is known as a bacteria. So prokaryotic cells equal bacteria. Okay? Pretty simple little concept. All right. Eukaryotic cells are just the opposite. They have a nucleus and they have membrane-bound organelles. Like in the mitochondria, um, if you're a plant, you'll have a chloroplast, you'll have your smooth and rough ERs, you'll have your Golgi bodies, you'll have lysosomes and vesicles. All right, they have all that stuff. Now, a great way to remember this is U means true. And true cells have a nucleus and they have the organelles. Now, there are five kingdoms in, in the world of biology. There's a prokaryotic kingdom. There's a plant kingdom. There's an animal kingdom. There's a fungus kingdom. And then there is the junk, junk drawer of biology, the protist kingdom. All of those are eukaryotic cells. So as a rule that you can follow is if you are not a bacterium, you're going to be eukaryotic cells, okay? And only multicellular creatures, of which plants and animals are all multicellular, they can only have eukaryotic cells, okay? Another thing you want to know about eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells are much, much bigger. Uh, prokaryotic cells are much tinier. Um, there's a link on our Moodle page to a little... Uh, animation that shows you the different sizes. All right. 
Um, when we were talking earlier about cells, they're very small and you need to use microscopes to see them. And w there's three common microscopes that are used in science to look at cells. The first one is the compound light microscope. And this is used to see living organisms. Um, they can be moving around, etc. But it does have limitations. It can only magnify at a maximum of right around a thousand times. Okay? That's this biggest limitation is its relatively small magnification power. The next two are electron microscopes. The first one is called a transmission electron microscope. And it is known as a TEM for short. I spell transmission. Okay. And what this does is it gives you two-dimensional view of cell parts. Fantastic for looking at the structure of a nucleus, a Golgi body, a mitochondria, etc. The next one is called a scanning electron microscope, SEM for short. And what this does, it gives you a three-dimensional view of the surface of the object. And so this is great for looking at the outside of a cell. Um, you see this often used to look at the outsides of insects or a fly's wings. Okay, both of these guys, they can magnify things hundreds of thousands of times, which is a huge benefit. The also the only problem is, is that electron microscopes, this is, this is really the one drawback. The electron microscopes, can, they're going to be used on non-living. Because in the preparation process, to see these images, they're coated with a metal, um, it happens in a vacuum, and that those two things will kill the object. But you do get very, very good pictures of them. So that's your, you know, your, your little trade-off. Right? So in review, the four things that all cells have in common, DNA, cell membranes, ribosomes, and cytoplasm. The other thing uh, the, the other thing we went over was the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes have no nucleus and no membrane not organelles. Just remember that pro means no, no nucleus and no organelles, and we know those better as bacteria. A eukaryote is just the opposite. It has a nucleus and it has membrane-bound organisms. U means true. True cells have a nucleus and organelles. And you have four different types of eukaryotic cells. Plant cells, animal cells, fungus, and protists. In other words, if you're not a bacteria, you're eukaryotic. And then these, what we just wrapped up with, were the three different types of their microscopes.